Oh, my levels. Sweet. Welcome back to Love Uninterrupted. I have another message. First off, I want to thank um, everyone who left comments and messages from my last video. I appreciate you guys stopping by. I, I'm thankful that you all found the message. I'm really thankful that you all found it um, beneficial and that it resonated. So I have another message for you and I'm going to just get right into it. So I am speaking to a shaman that is completing a cycle. <clears throat> the shaman has Egyptian and or a Celtic background. Um, the message that I received has a um, Triskeel symbol in it, which is associated in, uh, excuse me, Celtic culture. It is associated with female power, feminine power, and mother goddesses. So the shaman could be a natural born woman or could simply be in their feminine energy. And so this symbol, um, the Triskeel, if you're not familiar with it, is the three spiraled symbol. Um, you can look it up um, as it may provide you with additional messages. It's spelled T-R-I-S-K-E-L-E. -E. And um, there was also an eye of horse that I saw or that I see, which is why I'm saying that um, the shaman has some Egyptian background. So the shaman is completing a cycle. You're completing a cycle, I should say. And... Um, Similar to the last message that I had, there's a lot of bird energy that is out, that's coming out. Um, there is a phoenix that is appearing here. There's also another, it looks like a, it looks like a, I'm saying a cardinal because it's red, but the span of this bird looks much larger than a cardinal. So I'm not 100% sure if that's what it is or not. And we have multiple messages, multiple bird animal messages coming through. And there's also the presence of a brown bear. So this may be um, significant to you if these are animals that you already resonate with, or you may be seeing these animals in your environment. Maybe you're dreaming about them. Um, if so, if you are seeing them in your environment, my suggestion is, you know, to pay attention to it, be more conscious of it in whatever way you feel, feel led to maybe connect with that particular spirit animal. I'm not saying that you need to do anything in particular, any sort of spiritual work, but if you are seeing these animals in your physical environment or in your dream state or you know you have pictures of them or statues of them around your home um there may be some something some information there for you some message there for you so you're completing a cycle though um and in the completion of this cycle there's something that's being restored to you um and again this message of birds in this in this instance it's the image of feathers so you may be seeing feathers that simply may be an indication to you that restoration is on its way whatever you may um, have lost or feel as though you lost during this past cycle of your life the feathers are symbols or symbolism letting you know that you are being restored in this season, in the season that you are entering. There is a guidance for you to purge. Purge. This could be a pur purging of your environment, purging things that are in your environment, making space for what is coming in. Um, this could be emerging, excuse me, a purging of your, um, or maybe emerging. <laughs> you may be merging with someone. 
Um, but this could also be a purging of um, your mental space. Maybe there's some ideas or some thoughts or thought patterns that you have had and it's time to release those. Maybe there's some ideas or beliefs that you have um, carried with you. And these beliefs or ideas may have been a beneficial or they may have served you for a time. Um, again, I'm, I'm being drawn back to, to you as a shaman. There's nothing that a shaman has or no tool that a shaman has that is not of use. At some point in time, it is of use to the shaman in order to do their work. But because you are completing this cycle and you are um, moving on or moving forward, then the tools that you may have used in your previous cycle, you no longer need those. You may be being guided and or led to purge some of these things from you, from your being, from your consciousness. Uh, maybe this is a purging of some habits, eating habits, other habits that you have that may not be able to go into this next phase. Because during this time, it's interesting how these messages are coming out because, again, I just spoke about this in the previous message about um, soul retrieval. And so the reclamation of part, parts of your soul is, what is what's happening. This purging is necessary. It's necessary for the purging of these things. Um, within yourself, maybe within your your mental space or even your emotional body, because as you are reclaiming parts of your soul, some of the things that you're holding on to, your soul cannot come back into alignment within yourself without these old ideas being removed. Now you are being guided to take counsel, to um, connect with a spiritual community. Now, this can be a spiritual community that you find in your local area. You may find a community um, online, but you are being guided to take counsel. The, the image that came through here was of a, a sweat lodge. It makes me think of a um, um, local well, yeah, somewhat local community that I visited a few years back and they had a sweat lodge, which was, this was right before the um, pandemic. So the lodges that they held, of course, stopped. But that may be a message for someone, maybe um, that's something that you've been considering doing, starting or joining or participating in a sweat lodge. But in that environment or some other environment it may not be a lodge that you join at all but i am seeing the guidance to begin to seek counsel to seek others in a community where you are equally yoked if you will the reason that i'm seeing that this you're, the council needing to seek counsel or needing to, to find community or connect with community is needed or is, I don't want to say needed, I don't think that that's the appropriate word, but that you're being guided towards a community is because in this new cycle, new time period that you're headed into after this completion, now that you are completed, you've completed this cycle, you're entering a new space, and in this space, what you may find is that you are more interested in rituals or ceremony that is connected to healing purposes. And again, it brings me back to the, uh, the thought of a sweat lodge, um, because that is a healing space. So you may find yourself wanting to be more involved in those type of practices, specific rituals, specific ceremonies. You're being pushed out of your old life. So 
whatever cycle you just ended, you're being pushed out of that and pushed toward this new cycle, this new cycle where you're more in your power, you are more empowered, um, you're in a space where you're wanting to be seen, you're in a space where you are, maybe you want to be seen, maybe, maybe not you want to be seen, but you are more in a space where you're open to being seen, because what I'm feeling is that there was a time when you did not want to be seen. You really were protecting yourself. You may have sort of kept yourself in your own little bubble or box. So you're now entering this new space where you are more free spiritually. And because of that freedom, you are also more empowered and you're making choices, choices that you had not, you had not made before. You had, didn't feel like you could or or were capable of making um, these choices. So there's a restoration, as as I said before, that's happening here. And as you're going through this transformation, as you're reclaiming these parts of your soul and getting rid of or purging other spaces or ideas and things in your body that simply don't align with where you are headed. What is also happening is you are attracting more of the, um, you're attracting those, intangible things, those invisible things, those things that you've been dreaming and thinking of that have been in your um, mental space creatively. And those things are beginning to or will begin to come into your physical environment. They'll begin to be tangible. You'll begin to see that divine order is happening. Now, moving into this new space where you're more inclined to rituals or ceremony. Ceremony may be a better word. Um, I think some, some people may be averse to the word ritual, but either ritual or ceremony, it is what you are creating. This is you creating your own spiritual system for you because you have done this before as a shaman. This is not new to you. You are, have not stumbled upon this information. This is a reminder of what you've already known. This information is helping to draw out what is already buried within you that is already uh, deep within your subconscious mind and that is also um, being spoken um, from your heart. So the this space that you're enter, entering into this new space that you're entering will require that you remain grounded, do the things that help you to stay grounded, um, spend time in nature. Okay, connect with the earth, sunbathe, breathing exercises, Meditation, keeping yourself grounded as you as your consciousness expands, um, because what is also happening is your reality is shifting. There's a paradigm shift that's happening within your life as you go through these changes. These are these are these are powerful changes that are happening, and. Um, you know, these type of changes can shift the way that you see the world. You know, your reality becomes different. It becomes a new world for you because you're now seeing the world differently than you saw it before. So um, resourcefulness, being resourceful, taking advantage of um, the people, places, and things in your environment that um, are being sent for your guidance. Um, again, we've got 
owl messages here and this message of resourcefulness. I'm also seeing um, spiders may be significant. I'm seeing a, a web, a spider's web here. There's so much that is available to us, so many resources that are available to us right at our fingertips. We have, we have, we have become um, such a modern society where, you know, we do have a lot of information available to us at our fingertips by way of our computers, our phones, et cetera, um, you know, media, social media. But when I say we have so many resources available to us at our fingertips, I really mean I wasn't referring to the technology that's available. I was referring to everything else that's in our environment that literally is available to us that we can focus on and can either we can either receive messages and or guidance from or simply being present in the moment and taking stock of what's in our environment where we are in our environment what's happening in our lives at the time what's all around us that we literally can just look in our current space and find things to assist us things that can change our our perspective things that can shift our mood shift our mindset um there are so many resources that are available to us and we have unfortunately been um conditioned and or trained to not see those things um but thankfully we are coming into a space where we are able to really be thankful of all the things that are available to us, seen and unseen. The things that we are able to um, see and perceive with our physical senses and also those things that we are unable to see, but we are still able to perceive with our other senses, our sixth sense as as um, some would call it. So this message for me is saying to really pay attention and to be resourceful and to utilize the resources that are available to you in your environment. And um, to close out this message, I'm going to, I wanted, I pulled a card from um, this earth power Oracle, which is um, a deck that is, uh, it's an oracle deck that's essentially about these various places around the world. Um, and the different places, physical places are talking about, you know, the significance of that location um, and also providing us with the, some of their benefits. So, um the card that I pulled was Wallum, Wallumbin, which is Mount Warning. This mountain is in Australia. The primary element is air and earth. And I'm just going to read um, this really quickly. It says, I think one of the key attributes of a place of power is that when you see it, you find it hard to take your eyes off of it, even if there is beauty or other dominant features around it. This is exactly how I felt when I laid my eyes on the jagged outline of Mount Warning, or as it is known by the indigenous people, Wollombin, one late summer afternoon. I simply couldn't keep my eyes off it. Off of it. it was totally magnetic in every way. I almost felt like I needed to bow down in reverence. It was suggested that I climb it, but I got a wholehearted that's a negative from my intuition, even though part of me would have liked to. I later found out that the original peoples here, the Mundahalung, have laws prohibiting the climbing of Wallumbin and ask that people do not climb it as it is a sacred site. Wallumbin makes its own weather, and in fact, the name Wallumbin means cloud catcher. One of the largest erosion collodras Colladeras in the world, Wallumbin is what is left after a huge volcano erupted over 20 million years ago, 
over a 4,200 square kilometer range. Incredibly, remnants can be found in the reefs in the Pacific coast. Erosion gives the shape of a peak. Wollumbin is the first place to greet the dawn sun on the ancient continent of Australia. The peak itself changes color as the day progresses, firstly a blue-gray, then gold, then what seems a million shades of green, then misty as a Chinese brush painting, progressive yet eternal. It will be here for a long time to come. When you visit, respect the local indigenous beliefs and do not climb the mountain. Instead, camp where you can see the first rays of the sun hit the peak. As the light hits the top, listen to the incredible life awaken around you. Whip birds, frogs, owls, and the unique swirling black, black cockatoos who screech like fantastic griffins are all your companions in a chorus of almost psychedelic praise. Meditate on your own resilience and eternal nature. So with that, there's something about this particular location that may have some significance to you um, as the shaman listening to this message. Again, this is in Australia. I wanted to pull a message from this card because I do believe that that when we visit certain places that we do receive the benefits of the um, healing energies in that space, the sacredness of that space. And even though you may not be able to physically travel to Australia to visit this mountain, you do have the ability to visit this space in your mind. You have the the ability to place your consciousness there, which is the reason that I'm going to leave the GPS in the description box so that um, you can be as precise as possible if you decide that you want to utilize the exercise of visualization and placing yourself here in this space to connect with the um, healing or sacred energies of this of this space. The energies of this space is creation, fertility, boundaries, transformation, and resilience. And we did already see that um, earlier uh, and you well it was more of restoration than transformation but um, you completing this cycle and moving into this new cycle you're definitely transforming the life that you had previously and moving into um, this new era that you have already created the life that you're moving into this space that you are moving into it is something that you have already created. You thought of this. This is not something that just appeared. Um, this is a continuation of your own consciousness. So um, there is an affirmation here. I create my own destiny and opportunities. I am humbly eternal. And so if you have listened to this entire message Count yourself as extremely unique because I do absolutely nothing to promote and or market this content other than being myself. So count yourself as a cool ass person since you um, found your way to my spot and I appreciate you being here. So I will see you. I'm not going to see you. I don't know why I say that. I'll talk to you next time. Peace.